Yes, hello. Um, we are going to talk a little bit about the future of, um, of HDP. So this came out of us writing a paper on it. So we'll yeah. talk a little bit about that and then try to summarize some of the, is it eight or nine different talks eight, on the HDP eight. related stuff <laughs> that's also at yeah. the conference? Um, and then we'll talk a little bit about some of our ideas about Yeah, so we're going to future. frame it a little bit with, with the other talks. And so this talk will also be the introduction. We'll have an introduction to XDP, a very short one, but people, we sort of expect that people know what XDP is in, in, yes, in this room. Otherwise come to Jesper's other talk. Yeah, I have a, another talk together with Andy, who is here, as, as the last, last talk of the, the conference. All right. So. This sort of came out of, the, uh, of this work we did where we've written a scientific paper that um, introduces HDP to a more sort of an academic audience and tries to um, have sort of a full system level description of what HDP is and try to get it out to the research community and other people outside the community. And that's been accepted into uh, ACN Connect. We'll be presenting it in uh, a few weeks in Greece. And um, what we did here was sort of we took the existing framework, tried to make a, um, a dis an over overall description of it, and then did a full head-to-head -head comparison with DPDK. Um, and so as part of that, obviously, we were trying to look ahead a little bit um, on limitation of future work and so on. And so the purpose of this talk is to take some of that and solicit some ideas, some feedback from Maybe not, I'm not sure we will have so much time at this talk to get a lot of feedback. Yeah, but, but we, we hope at, the, at least yeah. that the hallway track you'll catch us if you are interested in one of the subjects and say this is wrong. All right. Or this is right. Yeah. <laughs> so what, what is this XTP stuff? So this is basically the, the one slide you get to introduction to XTP. So it is basically a new layer in the network stack. So before we allocate the SKB, and it works on the driver level. And basically, we do it just after the DMA synchronization to the CPU. Uh, this means that we, are, we, we can compare apples to apples with, with DBDK and, and NetMap uh, because we work at the same level now. And that, that also means it is super fast because we take the action earlier. And the whole point is that you can skip some of the network layers if, if that's some options you need. But you can also cooperate with the no normal network stack. And we avoid t doing any memory allocations, which is also part of the, the speed optimization. So it's important to note that this is not kernel bypass, and that's sort of why we're doing this, right? So it's the data plane, and we keep it inside the kernel. We have another talk with the uh, AFXTP, and we're also going to mention that, which, where we actually put the stuff into user space. And the really interesting part for us is that we are using the EPPF, which makes this the early part of the network stack runtime programmable. There's also the TC hook where you can do runtime programmability, but it's really a powerful feature that we get runtime programmability into the network stack. And we want to have some examples about how we cooperate with the network stack. So you want to talk? Here? Yes. So um, as, as I mentioned before, there's eight directly XTP related talks at this conference. And XTP has seen a lot of activity and it's been a huge success in uh, in that sense, it's still under active development. So there are people who are running it in production. We'll get back to that. Um, and it's been quite a uh, popular topic at networking conferences um, for a while. I think you just have to look at the title of this talk, this conference, to, <laughs> to see what I mean. So um, we'll try to go, th as we go through some of these things, we'll try to frame some of the, um, the talks that are given in. Uh, and we will try to avoid taking <laughs> their, yeah. their, their subjects and just refer to Yeah, we're not trying to steal the thunder <laughs> of any of the other talks. We're just trying to sort of put them into a, a bigger picture of what's going on with XDP. Yeah, so, so we have seen production use cases, even though we're saying this is still very active development. So Cloudflare, say they're using this, this mm -hmm. for their DDoS protection. We have SiriCasa that has plugins for XDP now. And Facebook have been an early adapter of this, and they've actually also released their CatRan load balancer as open source. And, and there's two other talks from Facebook, which shows that they're actually using this in real life production. And they've been very active, also contributing to the most active contributors to this, uh, I think, in the upstream kernels. So we are very, very happy to see this. Yeah. By the way, all the blue things are links. If you download the slides, you can find what it is we're talking about. 
Right, so um, <coughs> we are not going to talk a lot about performance. If you want to read the detailed performance um, analysis, go read the paper. But we, do sh we will show you two graphs, which show that we have narrowed the gap to DPDK quite a bit, but there's still a little, little bit to go. We'll talk a little bit about that. And then because XDP has different forwarding modes for some cases, we do actually have performance parity. So this is the first one, um, which just shows you packet drop performance as a number of, of CPU calls. So the single call performance of HTTP for just getting a packet in, dropping it immediately, and going on to the next one is 26 million packets per second. And um, DPDK gets 42 million or something. Yeah. And like, while that sounds like a lot, it's actually um, about 15 nanoseconds per packet in difference. Um, yeah, that's, 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 yeah, that's what we are missing, basically. And I think Bjorn's talk is going to be in more details about all the small optimizations we can do to, to yeah. really rig, bring it up to the DPDK speeds. So this is, and this is very much sort of a, um, for this particular driver and for this particular configuration, because a, the overhead of a single uh, function call is one and a half nanoseconds. So it, it accumulates really fast and that drops performance. So Neil has a question. What frame size? This is Minimum. the... And it's, it's not a mistake that we have over 100 million packets per second? Okay. Yeah. But that's actually yeah. the so speed we're operating at. It turns at. out that uh, processing lots of packets per second is what's challenging. So you can, we can saturate a 100 gig link with full size packets, no problem. Uh, but the, the overhead of, of the packets is what's counting. So we, like, it's packets per second with minimum size packets, everything. I want to also point out that like, the, the two lower lines is, is Linux, and, and that we have this default one that people come run, contract, and there's very low performance. And, and then the, the, IP, the Linux raw is the drop, dropping packets in the IP tables raw target. I also want to highlight how, how well we're doing like, linear scaling, actually. It's like, quite, quite well that we are not, we are not degrading any, any place. Yeah. We probably not spent so much time on this. Yeah, sorry. So, <laughs> yeah, um, better move on. This is the other one. So, of course, dropping packets is Wait, useful for something. Wait, you didn't even start yet. <laughs> three minutes until oh, we, we start. Oh, we get extra time. I thought we had <laughs> <laughs> All right, so. Uh, so this graph is interesting also because we have the, the XDP same nick, that's the XDP TX call, and we, have, and we beat DBDK here. So that's, we were sort of happy. But we also do less work, right? Because uh, yeah. we, 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 are, we are just bouncing the frame down in the driver. And Lexi? Uh, I think it's not in the paper, but uh, did you estimate the uh, little bit the uh, six four? Uh, Can you repeat the question to you, please? So the question was, it goes down a little bit from five to six cross. Do we know why? Um, uh, so, so the last, no. We, actually, here we are like at, at 70 million packets per second. We are hitting some kind of PCI bandwidth limit. Which uh, card is this? This, uh, this is your card, the M oh, MLX5. Yeah, we know that. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I think they, the difference between four, five, and six calls is mostly in the noise. But um, yeah. So this is just also to show you. Uh, also obviously, you also see the that the absolute magnitude of the numbers is a lot lower on this one than the other one because you do more work when you send the packets back out. Uh, yeah, and, and we, we, we do want to bring, bring XDP, there's a lot of small optimizations we can still do. So the lower line is, is XDP redirect, and we, we need to optimize that more. Yeah, so uh, but, uh, the, the basic takeaway from these performance graphs is that it's pretty good. Yeah. Like we're, the XDP is pretty fast, it's catching up to DPDK, maybe we'll get there at least, but, it, but the main point is that DPDK, uh, sorry, XDP has a lot of other architectural uh, benefits that um, DPDK doesn't, and that's sort of the main setting point. And go read the paper. Yeah. Yeah. So, 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 how do we evolve this XDP stuff? Because even though it's like a disruptive and innovative technology, we actually have to follow how the kernel works and how we evolve the kernel. And we've done that for the last two, three years now, I think. Uh, and and that's 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 actually pretty good. So we we do these small uh, improvements in every kernel release. And we benefit from all the cooperation with, with the community. And yes, you actually have to like argue why you, you, you need when you need a new use case in a new. And that's, that's good because we only add the use cases that make sense. That's how the, the, the kernel, kernel evolves. So now we are in a, 
evol evolving state before the like, XTP was like, now we're going to like radicalize stuff, and but now we, we are in an evolving state. So I, I really like that, and it's useful. Do you think? Okay, this is mine. Okay, yeah. So, so XTP is all about performance. Like that's the whole reason why we put it in. So we actually have to be really. Watch out for that we don't do feature creep when you add, add these different kind of features so we don't kill performance. So a sort of a guiding principle when we add stuff is that you must not ne negatively affect the baseline performance. And we have actually have to be, be very careful about that. So some of, the run some of the tricks we do is like we push runtime checks to set up time and, and do a lot of stuff around that. Uh, so there's other optimization techniques. Uh, one issue I do see is that who is monitoring the XTP performance? So I want some some kernel Q <laughs> CI guys to actually start testing this because the the, the spectral meltdown stuff it it caused the performance to go in half. But I didn't notice because I had I didn't run with a new 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 enough uh, uh, compiler, so I didn't notice this performance regression. I would really have liked to someone caught onto this before, and actually because it should have been quite obvious that the performance was dropped to half when you enable the spectra uh, mitigations. So I really want someone to, to go into this area. I'm, I'm trying to get Red Hat CI kernel guys to do some of it, but we really want to, to make sure that we do testing on the, on the off-stream kernels. Yes, um, so another point that uh, we wanted to make here is since HTTP is now in the kernel, you can run it. Uh, one of the benefits I was talking about earlier that you can get with HTTP but you can't get with something that's not integrated in the kernel is that you can leverage all the data structures, all the algorithms that are already uh, in the kernel. So uh, we did in the, in the paper, one of the examples we had was uh, IP routing and uh, David has a uh, talk a bit about that later. Yes, I see the next talk. Okay. That's the next talk. Okay, cool. So you don't have to wait. Um, but the idea is here, uh, well, we already have this whole ecosystem about routing in Linux. We have routing daemons, we have uh, the FIP, we have all these kinds of load up. You can do neighbor resolution and so on. And this already exists in the kernel. And if you go outside the kernel and try to do user space networking, you would have to re-implement all of this. So whereas with HTTP, what you can do is you can add helpers that um, to the kernel, which can be called directly from BPF with very little overhead, and get out the data from the kernel that already exists there. So in the example that, that we um, used in the, in the paper, well, there's an, a, a routing helper, so when a packet comes in, you pass the header, find the destination IP, throw it up to the helper, and that will come back and either tell you, I don't know what to do with this packet, or it will tell you, it goes out this interface and this is the next hub Mac for the packet going forward. And if you know that, then great, you can send it out straight away with very low overhead. Uh, and if you don't know that, instead what you can just do is you can pass the XTP pass return code, which will let the packet traverse off the networking stack, which will do the uh, neighbor resolution and so on for you. And then when the next packet comes in, you now have the next hub and you can do fast pass processing. And this kind of integration uh, with the kernel is one of the main selling points of XTP. And um, yeah, this is why we're starting to see the benefit of actually being an integrated part of the kernel that we're starting to get these, these helpers. Yeah, and, and these helpers can, like, there's not that many of them now. Like, routing is fairly new. Um, and it would make a lot of sense to sort of, if you think about use cases you want to do with XTP, think about do I want to leverage parts of the kernel? And if there's not already a helper, get on the mailing list, try to find someone to help you implement the helper, even implement it yourself. Um, so as, as long as there's a use case, it's quite possible to implement the new helper and, and get this functionality in there. I just saw that we just added or applied the, the socket lookup from, from, from XTP. So, yeah, so, so what, what, what we really also want to point out is that we see XTP as a building block. So it's, it's a, a, a core kernel uh, layer building block that people should start to use. So, so other open source projects are going to build and innovate on top of this. And I, I, I'm, I'm not the guy who's saying what you cannot innovate, what you can and cannot innovate. So this is, 
I'm hoping that, that people will pick this stuff up and actually use it for some really cool stuff that I couldn't imagine. Uh, and so that's, that's sort of one of the points is that this is a core infrastructure and we, we are hoping to see different stuff grow. So some of the directions we hope to see is that we do faster packet delivery into guests, uh, guest OSs. It's sort of already possible today. You can do a redirect into a TwinTap device which goes into a Red IO net do faster, basically you skip the, 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 net, the network stack. But there's missing some integrations to, to KVM and you know, QEMO and how we do that. So there's some plumbering around that, how, how, how we actually integrate these features and how we choose it. There's also the AFXTP approach, where, which offers the opportunity that we can do zero copy. We're still discussing how can this be possible or not by actually getting the guests to give some memory to the host operating system that is mapped directly into the so there's a lot of opportunities we hope to, hope to see in the future here. That's a very interesting area. And there's also, like, I think people have the wrong attitude when they're talking about P4, that, no, why do we want to P4 in the kernel? Well, no, you actually don't. You have the P4, and you, comp you compile it down to BPF, and then you can load it as you just have a, ha have a target that is BPF, and then if you ha can have another target, which is your switch architecture, Sure, you still have the same P4 program, but it's a user space tooling, tooling problem that we are just providing the XTP hook and you compile down. And that's actually a talk about this later. Uh, which I really like the approach, and there's links here in the slide. Yeah, and one of the points about, about this with P4, when you hear people who want to use B P4s also, um, it's a way to be able to express the rules in a different language than uh, the very sort of um, implementation specific framework of the hardware, or in this case of XTP, because as we saw, uh, there's also, if you go and find the GitHub repository for uh, the paper, you have all our notes about how we actually achieve this uh, performance. So there's a lot of tuning you still need to do to get the maximum performance. And the nice thing is about higher level tools like P4 or uh, Open vSwitch, all these things that can build upon XTP is that you can sort of split out the way that you, uh, you you express your business rules in a language, and then the compiler can try to, to do some of the optimizations for you. So you don't need to have uh, the very deep technical knowledge about the exact optimizations you need to do and still get really nice performance out of it. So HTTP is definitely um, something that can, that can be used as a building block for this as well. Yeah, and then we have something quite, quite interesting, which is also a, a talk that I'm looking very much forward to. Uh, so, so this is the AFXTP and zero copy into user space sort of goes a little bit against the, the, the model of what XTP was because before I said XTP is like uh, the in-kernel stuff, we keep the packet in the kernel. But now with AFXTP we can, we can deliver raw packets into user space. And to start with, the I think the AFXTP stuff was expressed as like they wanted to, to hook into TCP dump, but it's it's very unlike TCP dump because it owns and sort of steals the packets instead of TCP dump take a copy, and you will lose a lot of performance by by hooking into this. So we ended up, or Bjorn ended up, and uh, implementing this as an XTP hook because we, we provide some flexibility, uh, and that's one of the one of the key features I like with XTP that we don't steal the entire NIC. That, that we sort of have this flexibility. So now we actually have, you can have packet filtering to avoid these cases where you'd have kernel bypass solutions that want to re-inject the good packets into the kernel. Instead, you can filter out earlier on how, how you want to do this. And the other advantage is that all the drivers that, that implement the XTP redirect will actually automatically get sort of the fallback mode of this. They just support it out, out of the box. By, by a single copy in, in some core code. Uh, so if you want uh, AFXTP, we are seeing some, some ARM guys that wants to have this uh, and, and the copy mode is okay for them. So they just want to implement, uh, all of a sudden, these small ARM boards want to implement XTP redirect to get, get these features out. That's sort of interesting. So, so we have a full talk about this, but some of the performance tricks is, I mentioned it a little bit, that user space allocates a memory and, and give it to the kernel. And another thing I really liked about this is that sort of this is sort of the Van Jiggersman's net channels with a single producer, single consumer model. 
uh, that that we actually have have in the kernel now. Just well, how many years did it take? <laughs> like more than ten, right? Uh, uh. Yeah, and as we mentioned, there's two different talks um, that are related to the AFFTP things. Uh, I don't recall when they are, but yeah. Right, so uh, that was sort of our overview of all the stuff that's currently going on with XTP. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about some of our ideas for what we're going to do Yeah, next. We've, we've selected um, some of the crazy ideas. Now. I have much more crazy ideas, but that's, that's, <laughs> so just selected some of them. Yeah, so feel free to tell us that our, all our crazy ideas are actually really good. So one of my so long, long, long term uh, ideas or goals is actually to, to remove the SKB allocations completely from the drivers. So this is like a very long term goal, but we, we can sort of actually do it today. We already implemented it that you can redirect these raw frames either into a, a CPU map, so the allocation happens, SKB allocations happen on a remote CPU or into the TUNTAT driver. Uh, which, which, which caused the SKP allocation to happen later if, if it happens to see that it has to, be, has, has to do a SKP allocation. So that's, that's really a, a, a sort of a long-term long goal. Uh, <coughs> uh, and we, it does work now, but we are missing some of the, the driver offloads, which are fairly important, especially the checksum info. Uh, and also the receive hash, we also have, need to transfer that. We, all of these are also the hardware mark. It, I have patches out there which actually does it, but they, they got shut down with good reason because we want to actually be able to express this in a more vendor neutral way, in a more dynamic way. And, and I'm really looking forward for us to actually come up with a, a solution. And, and see it, Saeed also had a solution. We also got shut down for this, but I'm really hoping that we can find a vendor neutral way to express this. And I have really high hopes for the BTF, the BPF type format, and how the, we can define a metadata structure around this. And there's also a talk about this later where they're going to investigate and some of the, the possibilities in this area. Uh, so I'm stalling a little bit on, on, on some of, some of the, the, the offload parts. So, but it's going to be really interesting to see what's happening in, in this space. Yeah, the, uh, one of the other things that we um, want to look into a bit more is this, uh, it's a bit of a, a, a strange way that XTP works because when you need to do TX for an XTP frame out of an interface, you need to allocate certain hardware resources to that particular thing. And the way it's done now is that uh, drivers will allocate uh, one TXQ per CPU core to just to do HTTP stuff, uh, which are then not usable for anything else. And of course, this becomes a problem if you have 100 CPU cores. Um, you may get to the point where you can't actually use HTTP um, at all, because there's not enough uh, TXQs on the hardware. And also, this takes up a lot of resources. So by default, when you just turn on um, HTTP, or like when you, when you just turn on the, ha the hardware, it's not being allocated. <coughs> And um, so we need a way to actually tell the hardware, okay, we're going to do XDP transmit out of this interface. And we don't have that currently. So the current hack that's employed is when you attach an XDP program to an interface <coughs> on Rx, to process packets on Rx, we also allocate all the resources for TX. Even if this device only needs to process incoming traffic and never needs to TX anything out. Um, so that means that if you have the, the case where you have too many CPU cores for your networking hardware, you can't receive XTP, like you can't run XTP and receive in this interface either. And it also means that if, if you're doing um, redirect between two interfaces, you need to load a dummy um, XTP program on the interface that you're sending packets out of, which has some, like, it's not a very good UI. And also, uh, you <coughs> risk crashing the kernel when you, when you receive this. So there's, there's some work to be done here to make this experience a lot better. And our thought is that what you could do is you can have an explicit API inside the kernel that tells the, um, the, the egress driver to, OK, we're actually going to transmit stuff out of your hardware now. Please allocate some resources. And so the natural way to do this is we have this trigger where 
uh, when you redirect packages, you can do it through a BPF map, where you set up a map with the um, iFace IDs of the, uh, of the egress interfaces. Um, and then you can just monitor that map internally, uh, because that's a special map type, so you could, when an interface is added to this map, you can just allocate the resources on this interface. That's like a pretty natural way to do it, but the problem is that there's also a redirect variant where we don't use a map. We just pass the interface ID as a parameter to the call. Um, so we have to figure out how we can handle this uh, in a good way. Yeah, so let's, we, dev we haven't really solved that. The What you're saying, dropping the, the what? The effort that does the redirect without using the map. Like re remove, the removing the option yeah. to have the other kind of yeah, yeah. Um, the, the redirect, yes, that uh, is definitely an idea, which um, I don't, I don't, we have. Like, like I, I don't know sure if, we, if, if, if we can, can remove a helper again. That's not really possible, I think, because it's the helpers are like uh, enum that is incremented. Like, so we have to like, I think that's very controversial to remove, remove it again. Yeah, it's but but I, I'm, I'm, I'm like constantly having this, this with, on the mailing list. I'm quite annoyed that we, are, we added this, this non-map redirect because all of the time on the mailing list, I have to tell people, no, don't use that. Use the map redirect. It has the double performance. Don't use this. Come on. Yeah. So one, one thing that I, uh, if we can figure out a way to express the non-map redirect in terms of map redirect by having some kind of hidden map hidden away somewhere in extra special memory that no one gets in touch or something, that might be a way to do it. But yeah. we haven't yeah. We, that, yeah. We, uh, we, we did consider just having a, a default map, which <laughs> will automatically get created once. Yeah, just know. in time allocation of things on the map or something. <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, so it's, it's, it's uh, we, 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 we put a lot of energy into the dev map to make sure that on take it down and add, a, add additionally to adding or removing stuff on the dev map, it actually has, has a lot of synchronization points because we are moving a lot of the, the checks to setup time instead of runtime. That's what I, why we get some of the performance from. So it would be actually hard to, to, to do runtime. We get a packet and all of a sudden we create an entry in the map because the creating an entry is fairly expensive and we are depending on going through the, 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 the read copy update, uh, the RCU uh, <laughs> uh, scattering because we have to make sure that the memory resources are available. Right, so uh, another thing um, that is a bit of a challenge, especially from also a UI perspective, is that uh, you can't know what subset of the HTTP features that a given driver supports. So you can, have, you can implement HTTP support in a driver that only does uh, drop and TX, for example, and not redirect. But when you load an HTTP program that then tries to redirect out this interface anyway, uh, the package is just silently dropped. And, uh, not, not completely silent because there's a trace point you can hook into, but, but people know, don't know that. Yeah. <laughs> from, from the point of view of the person trying this the first time, the, pilot, the, package, the package is just gone. And, and because this is HTTP and we work before TCP dump, <laughs> there's like no way of debugging this. Yeah. yeah. So, um, and. For example, you have the uh, Suricata um, software that's, that's using this and wants to have a fallback. So um, you can try redirect, but you can't really know if it works. So it would be good for uh, applications like this to have a way to either query uh, feature bits, which um, is, is one way, or, or just to express this program needs these particular features, please reject it if it doesn't work. Um, so that you can, okay, you can try it, and if it doesn't work, you can fall back to like a TC-based solution or, or whatever it is you want to do for your use case. Yeah, so that's, that's why we want to be able to query it. So whether, how we, we express this and how we solve it is a little bit, been up several times on the mailing list, and we're not quite yeah. sure how that's to express this. And I think like, the reason this isn't there currently is that uh, from the beginning, the goal has always been we want to support all features and all drivers. Um, and now it's n years in, and that is still not the case. So I, the, the reason we're bringing it up here is also just to say, is this still a realistic goal? Um, should we try, should we keep going towards this? Or should we actually try to do some way for user space to do discovery, for example? We're too nice. What? 
we're too nice. <laughs> we're too nice. Yeah, people add XDP support, and we're happy to have some XDP support rather than none. Yeah. And mm -hmm. some that we don't, we're not hardcore about enforcing full feature set. Yeah. No, or uh, sometimes people say, I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. Yes. Okay, and then that never comes to pass. Yes, that is also a, a way to, to fix it, I guess. Yeah, I Another way to look at this is... For features that aren't supported, should we have a slow path available that somehow kicks in when the driver doesn't fully support a particular XDP feature, and how feasible is that to begin with? Yes. Yeah, that's 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 difficult to f to have a fallback because some actually have to happen down with the driver, and yes. how does that work out? There was another question in the back. Oh, yeah, I think there's sort of we have this a little bit today, right? In the native versus SKB mode. I mean, you can run on an unsupported adapter. You can run So we have this today with the, the native mode versus SKB mode. I still have to hold it out here. Um, yeah. So there's a little bit, I mean, as, you know, as, as someone who has some responsibility for a driver that currently doesn't support redirect in the tree, right, um, we, can, we can still use it. It's still usable. It's just the performance isn't as good. Yeah, actually, so with, with redirect, we have a problem because it's not really, some of the redirects are not supported in the generic XDP, which sort of is the fallback. OK. And the people also got surprised by that. They wanted to, like, I, ha I have to fix that. It's my fault. So, but like with the, the yeah. CPU map redirects, that it doesn't support the generic. there are some issues, yeah. too, if you do generic mode, but the place you're sending to has support for TA anyway. It's, yeah, there's, there's, it's a lot of, there's a lot of fun with the, the <laughs> right. generic mode that doesn't work exactly like we're. Right. Thank you. Right. Um, another crazy idea is. Uh, that's also a fa fairly controversial idea, I guess, but yes. we'll see how far so, we get. Uh, this is also c actually came from the uh, we don't know if HTTP redirect is going to succeed problem. Um, so uh, this can happen if the driver does not support redirect, you get just drop packets. But it also happens if the egress interface TX ring is full. You also get the same, okay, the, the redirect just doesn't succeed and you can't detect that from the incoming BPF program, except for like looking at trace points and so on. And this is especially uh, problematic if you have um, a fast to slow device redirect. Like if you're trying to get a 100 gigabit into a device redirecting into a 10 gigabit uh, device, you're going to have a bad time. Um, like that's, you technically get an AQM, but it's not a very good one. So um, some way of detecting this and some way of doing some processing. And then we, we came up with the idea of why don't we do this as an egress hook so that we add another place where you can run BPF code um, on egress from an interface just before the packets are put into the TX ring. Um, if we do this, we could have the current status of the TX, uh, the TX ring from the hardware. You could have that as the metadata field that BPF can react to. Uh, and then through maps or some other mechanism, you can signal the uh, RX XDP program to back off, send packets another way or something. You could also actually use this to implement QoS, some kind of thing, poli pol policing, um, HOM, something. Uh, and it would uh, also allow us somewhere to run BPF programs after the QDISC for packets that come in from the host. Um, so, yeah. so there's, there's, that, there's a lot a of possibilities in this. Yeah. There's still quite a lot of different, like, use cases that we could use it for, and this would be the most generic way to express it, which if you can ha have another thing like a XDP, like hook, maybe the, if you can keep the program type, maybe it will be difficult, but we would, it would be preferable. And, and yeah, so you, as you say, there's, there's quite a lot of interesting use cases around this, but there's also a lot of open ends. Uh, yeah, it's not necessarily trivial to do this. Um, and so the, the crazy part of the crazy idea is also, okay, so we have this egress root. What about adding the ability for the BPF program that runs at TX to also do things like redirect the, um, the device? You can have like a, an infinite loop inside the kernel just of the BPF programs. <laughs> really yeah. That would be great. Yeah. And then we really tech took over. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. But yeah, so that's, that's one of the really crazy ideas, how, how we actually limit this stuff. But it could be quite interesting to 
before actually just reporting the packet was dropped, but actually saying, well, the packet, we know the packet is going to be dropped, but let's take a new uh, redirect action, uh, redirecting out another interface. Uh, so there's a lot of possibilities or, or saying back, we could re reply back to the, like, truncate the packet so it's not so big and send it back to the, to the, to the sender and say, this is, so right. there's some memory and DNA stuff. I think we're going to talk pretty fast about this. Just got told we don't have that much time. Uh, so uh, we recently added some, some memory models per receive uh, queue and for the drivers. This did actually a lot of uh, flexibility and will make us able to, to sort of innovate in this area. But uh, we also want to take this opportunity and make and try to make some shared code between the drivers for how they do the memory allocation on, on receive and how these pages get cycled back. Uh, so, so I'm going to work together with, with, with Mellanox and Tarek and, and, and some of the Linaro guys actually, they also want to make this work on ARM. So we are going to, to see if we can generalize an allocation API that the, that the drivers could use for, for this to make it easier to, to implement uh, some allocation API for, for, for driver code. Other stuff we're planning is that we want to extend the return frame API to do bulking. That's sort of obvious. And then the other thing is to keep these pages DMA mat, uh, which is also will be interesting to do some work on the, the ARM uh, to see how much it matters there. So the DMA mapping, keeping those pages map has not get gotten a lot of uh, attention because it's really fast on Intel CPUs. Uh, so we have optimized a lot for Intel CPUs, and all of a sudden this Spectre version 2 came, and, and all of the DMA calls just got really expensive. So, so we have to also, we have, we'll be forced to fix it even for the Intel CPUs. So that's sort of a good motivation. Um, yeah. yeah, so um, just to summarize everything we've said, um, we wrote a paper on HTTP. Go read it. Uh, the sources on the full PDF is available on GitHub. So just share it around. Um, there's a lot of talks going on at this LTC about HTTP. Um, here's the full list, and uh, go see those as well. And then some of the uh, directions, some of the ideas, we have for future directions for HTTP. Moving the HTTP allocation out of the drivers, resource allocation for the uh, TX part of HTTP, uh, XTP feature discovery or some other mechanism to make sure that it always works. Uh, an egress hook for XTP and improving memory models and DMA mapping um, across the board. Yeah, and that's, that's sort of it. And we all, it's sort of obvious that the, with this many talks that there's a lot of contributors in this and, and also in this room. So we want to thank all of the contributors for that this, this is actually a combined effort of, of a lot of people. So. So thank you. We have a couple minutes for questions. Anyone have any questions for Yes Brent? Okay. Uh, so, uh, regarding the TX allocation issue, have you thought about uh, allocating the death map at a verification time? Yeah, the problem is you can change the dev map from user space at any time. Uh, well, the idea would be adding, let's say, somewhat well-known dev, uh, dev map name, uh, which user space should not use by default, and looking right. up uh, devices in that map at uh, redirect time. If you do not do not find the yeah, Look I at the if yeah, index you add it. The, the non, uh, I, I think that is what we were thinking. Yeah. Something along those yeah. lines. Yeah. yeah. So 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 the idea is we, we create us uh, we always create a map a, a dev map type which is empty and and then we say yeah. the, the user interface is that if you wanted to redirect it just basically doesn't work to start with but you have to have this remember to take this map which, which with this name and. It's always allocated. You have to insert the the, the IF indexes into yeah. this. Uh, That's the, what you're proposing. The, yeah, the, the the map could be created by the verifier if it finds that yeah. the BPF 
uh, redirect helper is used by the program. Only if. Oh, oh, okay. So, so you you will wait. The way I understand it is, you you wait to create this this special map until the first program that gets loaded and it runs through the verifier and the verifier say, this is a a, a, a HTTP redirect without a map. But yeah. now, okay, I'm going to create a map. Yeah, yeah, like that. And then just in time, allocate the actual numbers of IP so, addresses. Yeah, that I think that would actually work then when the BPF at BPF load. Just call time. We create the map, and then uh, how do we reference the map? We cannot reference the map from from the, the elf code, but that should be okay. We can still have user space. Pick it up afterwards. And you could, uh, maybe the helper could do that. Could know where that map resides. If the user space yeah. can access yeah. the map, it's actually good. Yeah, that, that might be. I I think that something along those lines might be a way forward. Yeah. And then, yeah, we, as there's no API for it now, we could define this API that people will have to populate this. I don't know. Daniel is like, doesn't look too happy. So. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, yeah, we'll, we can take it offline, but we'll, we'll that's, more on that's definitely time. an interesting idea. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, anyone else? We have a couple minutes. Oh. Hi, so is there any motivation for trying to stack like multiple XDB programs? Uh, you just want user space to do the job, combine them together. In, in, in the next talk, talk coming up, I think uh, uh, David is going to talk about that, it, that we don't want to stack several XDP programs on top of each other for performance reasons. And we want to figure out a way that the, the initial XDP program actually has have the information of, for example, stacked net devices and with VLAN and bonding and how he tries tries to solve this. As so I think the continuing thread in all this is that the real power of having eBPF programs do packet processing is that we can look at all the things you're trying to do and optimize and consolidate them into the most minimal set of instructions that will implement the policy or framework that you're trying to do. And Stacking and having layers and multiple programs running runs kind of away from that kind of goal, those, that set of goals that we have. So that's. Yeah. This also doing. goes back to the point we had about when we add new features, we have to make sure we don't kill performance. Exactly. And so it's like not everything is going to be possible with XDP. Yep. It, it would be a lot easier just to have it on every stack device for a have running BPF XDP program, but it, it will actually it will hurt performance. So we actually want to spend some. Like brain Theoretically, power, it, brain degenerates, power on how it degenerates to. down to the existing network instead. Yes, basically. Yeah. basically, and that's exactly, exactly. You take it to the logical conclusion. Yeah, and that's that's why we really want to put some brain power into figuring out ca how can we solve this in a, in a in another way that doesn't just degrade down to the same performance. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you for your presentation, and we'll get ready for David Ahern, who's coming up next. Okay.